the first five questions or six questions what we have discussed that is the starting point for our course okay what is the first question second question excellent third question yeah fourth one no how does a chemical process flow chart start start that is i think third question yeah fourth question was chemical reaction what is chemical reaction engineering and fifth question what is the information necessary for reaction yeah information required for reactor design and then of course heterogeneous homogeneous and all that we have discussed okay so we finally ended up with with this diagram again i am trying to draw this so reactor what is this input yeah output yeah this one kinetics contacting yeah then here we have chemical physical, chemical physical. physical here we have batch we have continuous oh. and here we have pf mf okay i think that I, equation i don't want to write so please remember this diagram you will have all the information that is required for reactor design okay please don't forget that if anyone asks you what is the information required for uh, reactor design draw this figure okay and then explain what you what you have to i um, mean explain that is what is the meaning of physical kinetics uh, chemical kinetics batch and continuous and we have also discussed when do you choose batch and when do you choose continuous okay physical chemical also we have discussed it saying that in physical kinetics when you say sometimes you will be surprised i will derive also after some time that kinetic expression will not be there at all chemical kinetic expression will not be there at all it is only the physical equation mass transfer equation that is what what you have to substitute in the reactor design expression that is what is your, your minus ra your minus ra will be simply kg into cab minus cas where cas is concentration on the surface and cab is concentration on the bulk in the bulk okay so that is why that physical kinetics will automatically come into picture that we will do uh, derive later but when you are talking about continuous uh, and uh, sorry uh, contacting batch and continuous when do you choose batch system i think we discussed i think it is better for me huh yes. okay small small production rates okay so then that is the only criteria or is there, is there any other criteria very slow when you ha ah, very very slow reactions yes then yeah it's not residence time residence time you can also use the continuous system yeah so that that's only criteria when you have what did you say the first one batch batch uh, small scale product small scale and then second one what you said is very slow reaction that's all there is another one important point flux when you have unsteady it is a batch reactor is always unsteady state unsteady. seasonal huh? production seasonal production yeah flexibility in production that point also is very important you if, when you need some flexibility in production that means you are not dealing with one product you are dealing with maybe five six products so if you have two three batch reactors you can produce any time these two three products okay that means there is no continuous demand for the products so based on that you will choose which product you have to produce now for that batch is the best system so but automatically that uh, uh, total production rate also must be small it cannot be very very large and then still you have flexibility right when you have uh, when you want to have that kind of flexibility for very very big uh, size plants you have to go for only continuous that's all i mean there is no other choice okay good so that is why that important point also please remember three important criteria you know uh, many books will not give this information even if they give they will simply write in one corner one sentence where you don't have you know you you cannot uh, go to that particular sentence and then remember it so that's why i am telling you these are the things basic things that is required before we start reactor design actual expressions because you should know what is the information required you should know what is the meaning of chemical kinetics physical kinetics because this will differentiate whether you have heterogeneous reactions or homogeneous reactions and here when you come in contacting you would like to have contacting either continuously or batch 
and now uh, if you get a job in industry when you go and then people may ask you okay, okay now we have a, a new product coming coming this size so you design the entire plant means you should know that because entire plant design starts with only reactor design first okay so because you have a stoichiometric equation already they would have given you then you also they will also tell you production uh, capacity or otherwise they will ask you to go for literature no, not not literature what is that market survey and uh, from market survey you will get what is the production rate and if it is very very large you automatically decide continuous if it is small then you know i told you know maybe it is 10 tons 15 tons 20 tons okay or 1 ton definitely yes but we have some uh, yeah gray some gray area where maybe between 10 to 100 tons whether you go for continuous or maybe batch so for that you have to now simulate the whole system on the computer and then try to find out economically whether it is feasible to go for uh, yeah, a continuous system or batch system. But if you have let us say 10,000 tons per uh, day if you want to produce definitely there is no choice no batch you have to go for only continuous. If you are going only for 1 uh, ton again definitely you have to go for only batch I think you know there is no point in designing a continuous system for that. So, these are the things. So, then again we have also discussed in continuous we have two chances or two choices plug flow and mixed flow and we discussed last class that plug flow you will go for only very short residence times and the short residence time is mainly for gas phase reactions because gas phase reactions are very very fast even if there is catalytic gas phase reaction the reaction time is again very very small seconds why because by definition of plug flow you have to maintain very very high Reynolds numbers velocities right. So, when you are maintaining very high velocity if you need very large residence times your length of the reactor will be very very large you cannot have uh, I mean automatically diameter increasing because when you are increasing the diameter you cannot maintain plug flow right plug flow means flat velocity profile right and one of the definitions which is also right but the correct definition is each and every particle must spend exactly same time there yeah so that condition will come when you have only flat velocity profile flat velocity profile fluid mechanically you get only when Reynolds number equal to infinity. infinity. So, that means velocity equal to infinity if you fix this as a diameter. So, when velocity equal to infinity I mean you cannot provide you know length by infinity always 0 velocity length by velocity equal to t bar mean residence time. So, this velocity is infinity means you can provide only 0 time in the yeah. reactor. So, that means all plug flow reactions theoretically speaking should have 0 reaction time because we do not use zero, 0 reaction times. So, we now say that if the reaction time is very very small in minutes or seconds then you go for only plug flow and all packed beds are also imagined as plug flow reactors. Why? Because you can very beautifully get a flat velocity profile in packed bed reactors that I will discuss when we are coming again to uh, separately designing packed bed uh, not packed bed plug flow reactors ok good. So, now uh, mixed flow, mixed flow generally used for very very uh, ok another uh, thing also for uh, plug flow. So, ok one is uh, residence time yeah what is the other criteria? Yeah. Exothermic, Exothermic reaction, reaction. Yeah. because it is impossible to uh, maintain isothermal conditions in a lengthy reactor ok it cannot that also we will discuss when we talk about uh, plug flow reactors again it is not possible there will be definitely some temperature variation and if you want to have exactly one temperature in a plug flow reactor you should know uh, you should put infinite number of heat exchangers with different capacities ok that also I will explain to you. So, that is not possible that is why uh, if highly exothermic reactions you automatically go for mixed flow reactors where in due to mixing you can maintain one temperature and one concentration that is the definition of mixing by the by ok. So, those conditions. Now, if you come to mixed flow when you have very large residence times like liquid phase, liquid phase reactions will take place in uh, you know 8 hours, 10 hours, 15 hours. If it is biological waste water treatment I told you 3 weeks, 4 weeks, 1 month, 1 month is 4 weeks anyway ok. Yeah. So, so much time is required for liquid phase reactions and many industrial reactions will be definitely between 4 to 12 hours. You know uh, you should have seen 
in the labs also esterification reactions, esterification, saponification reactions. These reactions are 6 to 8 hours or 6 to 10 hours. Okay? So, to provide 10 hours mean residence time, you need a tank, because the flow rate and volume of tank will, will give you that much residence time. That is the reason why you go for mixed flow system for liquid phase reactions. And another best advantage for liquid uh, mixed flow is that exothermic reactions. If there are exothermic reactions, happily go for mixed flow and mixed flow is the best to control. Right? So, this is the criteria. So, now let us start uh, deriving first the batch reactor. Let us take batch reactor and afterwards we will take continuous reactors. Okay? So, we are now discussing about uh, derivation of ideal batch reactor. Yeah. So, you know very well that all the batch reactors normally in our textbooks we will have drawn something like this. There will be a jacket and then you will have okay, a stirrer, this is closed then you will have a pressure gauge, then we will have temperature. Okay? So, of course, here you may have temperature measurement through thermocouple or somewhere, something. Thermometers no one will put, but thermocouple. Okay? Good. Yeah. So, this is how it looks and we will fill up normally till this point. And when you are talking about reaction mixture, that volume when you are deriving it actually. So, that uh, when you are calculating that volume will be only this is the volume reaction mixture. This we spe we call it as vapor space. In case the reaction is taking place around maybe 120, 150, if the vapor pressure of this reactant and mixer reaction mixer is more, then there will be some vapor forming on the top. So, that has to be there. Okay? So, you cannot also take it out continuously because you know concentrations may change. So, that is why you just leave it and then close everything and there may be dangerous chemicals where you have to really tightly close okay? or otherwise if it is very, very harmless chemicals even without the top also you can conduct the reaction. Okay? That means, you know this part will not be there. That is not scientific, scientific way of doing and, but anyway that is also possible for us. So, this is the one and why do we call this one as ideal batch reactor? What do you mean by ideal batch reactor? So, in all these reactors we are assuming that we have only ideal conditions, ideal contacting. Okay? And first of all, the question is, why should we assume this ideal condition? And what is this ideal condition? So, the ideal condition for batch reactor, what do you think? What are the conditions? Why it should be? But normally, what we do in the batch reactor, we put the concentrations at time t equal to 0. Okay? I time t equal to 0, C a may be C a naught, some concentration and after some time greater than or no, okay, greater than uh, 0, you will have C a equal to some concentration which is a function of time continuously decreasing if it is a reactant or if it is a product continuously increasing, that much we know. Then we will, uh, yeah, we will uh, charge the reactor with whatever amount maybe 1 ton or 500 kgs or whatever and then we start stirring. Normally, what we do is we start the heating system if the reaction is taking place at high temperatures maybe 100 degree centigrade. So, till then even though we have the reactions there all that we do not consider. Even though we can consider you know definitely we know how to do that not much mathematics are required, but still we can do that. Yeah. So, then uh, we will wait till that reaction time is complete. How do you know that that reaction time is complete? That is what, what we are going to derive now for above from the equations. Good. So, this is what and as someone was telling that okay, I have this setup and I put this and I started the stirrer and what I expect inside the reactor is at any time inside the concentration of C A and temperature must be uniform throughout. Okay. That is the ideal condition. Okay. Ideal condition is concentration and temperature must be 
uniform throughout the reactor at any time t. It is only uniform, it is not same. It is not, if it is same means there is no reaction. All the time if it is same only C or not then there is no reaction. Okay? It is must be uniform throughout at, at, at any particular instant of time when you look. Right? So, okay. Now, my question is this is the condition for uh, ideal uh, batch reactor, but why should I assume that? What will happen if I do not assume? Why? I think because I can take always sample and then uh, find out what is the uh, uh, concentration. So, we cannot say at what time the reaction will be complete. Any other ideas? What are the non linearities you are talking? But what is the meaning of non linearity first of all? Ah. Ah. That is there already non uh, that equation is non-linear. Arena's equation. Ah. No, no, how can I avoid? See, even though I, uh, you know if I have uniform stirring, how can I avoid uh, non-linearity of uh, rate expression with temperature change? Or if I have a second order uh, equation, second order rate expression, how can I assume that will be first order? You understood linearity, you know what do you mean by linearity? There are no flow rates, it is a batch system we are talking. So, we need to actual For example, if say in uh, theoretically we can say 90 percent conversion should be at time t, yeah. and in a, in, a, in a practical reactor we are only getting 85 percent of conversion. Uh. So, we, it means that we have skill, still have scope for to increase it up to 90 percent, though it is not practically possible. It but why is it not practically possible? What are the things uh, why you have ignored uh, practically? Because there are non ideal T6. What non ideal? There may not be proper mixing. At the yeah, I mean, what are the non idealities? Because we had ideal batch reactor. So, what kind of non idealities we can expect? Only, oh yeah, only mixing, right? What I am asking is if I ignore that, where is my problem coming? Huh? Oh, okay, it, it is different. If if I don't have definitely good mixing, so definitely it will be different. So what? The conservation, the the conversion may yeah, not be. Yeah, that is very important. The rate expression which we are getting, I don't know how to write. The rate expression is a function of concentration. temperature and concentration. and concentration. Forget about temperature now, right now. We only talk about concentration. You have non ideality, that means it is not uniform mixing. So, it is a function of concentration. Next question is which concentration? The concentration here or here or here or here or here, where? Yeah, but you know, definitely my problem is solved if I am able to have throughout only one concentration. Then I know definitely my rate is a function of that concentration. Otherwise, if the concentration is changing at various places, now I should get, I should measure at each, each and every point, I should get some average of that, weighted average. For example, in this volume, I take uh, 1 percent volume, what is the concentration? I take 5 percent volume, what is the concentration? Another 1 percent here, what is the concentration? Another 10 percent here, what is the concentration? I have to sum up all that and then take some average, some volume average which is headache for me. Why? Because fluid mechanics already taught me that you better design a, uh, how to design a stirrer. So, you do very efficient stirrer. So, naturally you will avoid all that measurements here, 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 here. First of all, how do you measure? You have to put infinite number of probes there, okay, if you are directly reading. Otherwise, like you know how you took the sample using pipette like that. How many pipettes you have to use? What length? 
and that fellow is stirring inside that may break uh, you know this uh, the pipettes all this why that problem simple problem is design a good stirrer mixer the problem is solved so that is the beauty in assuming that we have ideal batch reactor ideal mixing okay now you know no i think because most of the time we will not discuss this part we will say that assume uniform mixing that's all we say so that it will give you uniform concentration and uniform temperature but we never ask so what if i don't assume what will happen what will happen is your life will be miserable in measuring in at every point and after that you have to average it out okay so some kind of weighted average or you know either weights you have to use volumes you have to use all that and first of all how do you measure them throughout the reactor and in the lab it is okay maximum i may take 1 liter 2 liters 5 liters but in industry it will be 5 meter cubed one well big well so that well i think inside that you are stirring and all that how do you take the samples there in the well so to avoid that we will say that yes now i can design a perfect uh, you know stirrer and that is much easier for me than measuring the concentrations at various points now let me assume that i have a perfect stirrer where it gives me uniform concentration and uniform temperature so that is the meaning of this assumption and if that assumption is not there then you have a problem to define even what is rate because rate is a function of concentration and temperature temperature is varying at various places concentration is varying at various places which rate you are talking so when i am writing my material balance i don't know which rate i have to write unless you take again some average rate right so that average rate is given by your stirrer that's all what you are doing is instead of you doing all that you are asking the stirrer to do that that's all when it is perfectly mixing uh, the contents will be only with one concentration and one temperature so that you can happily measure that concentration only one concentration you have to measure one measurement and then you can write the rate expression so once we know that then how do we write the expressions like the material balance first i think we are doing only first isothermal let me also write here put it in bracket and non isothermal we will do it after you learn something from uh, isothermal reactors that we will do later so here and uh, you know we have one universal uh, material balance equation it is a mass balance equation what i am telling i am not writing energy balance energy balance i will write later so mass balance equation always when you are writing mass balance please remember you have to specify you are writing for which species mass balance is always for individual species whereas energy balance is for whole thing you don't have to differentiate okay that is the beauty in a, uh, you know heat transfer because it is simplifies whereas mass transfer every species you have to write and uh, always in in our course that our species is a reactant a which is a limited reactant limited you know what is that limiting reactant which is a limiting reactant or key reactant that's also another name what we say right so that means that is the one which is really governing the rate uh, you heard of definitely what is pseudo homogeneous yeah pseudo first order for example actually that is a second order reaction a plus b going to some uh, reaction then i am taking maybe 100 or 200 moles of b and only one mole of a this is what we call pseudo homogeneous first order reaction with respect to a why a because i can see only the concentration change with respect to a with respect to b i cannot see because i have 500 moles or 200 moles practically there is no concentration change in that okay so that is why we have to write only for a particular species and here we do for key reactant and all the time when we write mass balance a that means that is our key reactant or limiting reactant okay the universal equation always what we have is input equal to output plus accumulation yeah plus rxn reaction okay where except the problems as i told you all other things are only written with his hand including graphs it is worth seeing i have a copy i think i will show it to you once i have a copy okay library copy only because it is with me it is not lost so otherwise i think <laughs> that also could have gone i don't know it is beautiful his handwriting 
some of his papers also, I will also send some of his papers where he has drawn the diagrams and graphs with his own handwriting and the matrix of course, type. So, that is why all excellent engineers will have very good handwriting. Good. So, this is the equation what we have. So, now, uh, this equation I can simplify if we say that for constant density system. Okay. Then, this will become N A naught by yeah, v, a, v equal to C A naught. Where is the over oh, here? Yeah. For constant density system, for constant density T equal to um, yeah, N A naught because for other sake I think I will just write here into d x a o oh, integral d x a by minus r a 0 to x a which is nothing but c a naught <coughs> minus r a that is the one. Okay? Good and uh, if uh, the other example what I gave if volume is changing Okay, that means, one mole giving four moles or maybe four moles giving one mole that is volume reduction. Okay. So, the volume reduction is given by Levens PL as yeah, for isothermal system, we are writing isothermal system, V equal to V naught into where epsilon A equal to so, this is the equation, linear equation what he has <coughs> used, where epsilon a is number of moles pre initially present minus, final minus, minus initial yeah, yeah, final minus initial divided by initial okay, or volume, volume at t equal to 0, volume at any time divided by volume at t equal to 0. Okay. That equation also what is the origin and all that I will derive. I do not ask you to blindly accept that, but Levens PL directly says that assume the variation in volume is linear. Okay. So, why we should assume or why we cannot assume we will derive, I will derive and then let you know. Okay. So, that we will do after completing this contacting pattern. So, then for uh, variable volume, you will have an equation T equal to N A naught. 0 to x a n a naught. Yeah. So, then uh, d x a by minus r a into v naught 1 plus epsilon a x a. Okay. So, this this equation I have written now later after that then this is equation number 8. This will be equation number 9 this is the general expression again for variable volume and you know this V naught is a constant. Yeah, that becomes C A naught. Good. So, for constant density systems, this if I take here T equal to C A naught 0 to x A d x A minus R A 1 plus epsilon a x a. Very good. Okay. Good. So, this is the equation for constant density system. Um, sorry, variable volume system. Okay. Good. So, now, uh, this uh, equation, he just leaves it without integrating. Then, of course, as special cases, you can always do that. Okay. And, he also puts this in the form of graphs we are only simply putting this equation in the form of graphs, this integral in fact. How do I plot this integral as a graph to get that area under the curve? Where is this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You see, this d x a is, x a must be in y axis or x axis? Yeah, because with respect to this, you are integrating that. So, this is x a and yeah, minus 1 by r a okay so what you get here is 
this kind of thing. Okay. And yeah, yeah, actually when you plot x a versus 1 by minus r a, you get like this. Right. So, you take till whatever conversion you want x a and this area under the curve, I should have brought this one t by c a naught this side. Okay. So, in fact, I should not here also have to add here in this case 1 plus epsilon a x a that entire thing I am plotting. Okay. Yeah. So, this will give me directly t by c a naught. Okay. Yeah. So, but I if I plot this one constant density system, I have to plot this one as yeah, this is variable volume, right? This is variable, variable volume. For constant thing, you have 1 by minus r a versus x a, again giving me like this, this is t by c a naught. So, that is how, because he uses, these are, uh, even though I think earlier people have used, these plots are called Lewenspiel plots, minus r a, but I think originally also people used it, but somehow I think people call this one as Lewenspiel plots and idea here is because he is an excellent engineer, okay? idea I told you. Know. So, the reason is that this equation, how complicated it would be, we do not know. Okay? So, if it is a simple one, we have a mathematical expression, analytical expression. But in industry, when you go for complicated reactions, I do not have to really integrate that using mathematics. Sometimes, it is not possible to integrate. So, you have to go either numerical integration or you have to go for graphical integration. Graphical integration is this. So, you will simply calculate this x versus all this different x, because epsilon a you will calculate, you will know that and then x and minus r a, because minus r a is nothing but uh, no, some equation in terms of k c a for example, first order if you take. So, that c a again will have c a naught into 1, uh, one minus x a, but e is variable volume that also will have this 1 minus epsilon a x a cancels and all that, but anyway. So, that you will have this function as only x and uh, only x that is nothing else. Other things are constant. Okay. So, then you can plot and then get the value. Okay. That is not difficult at all, but these are the basic reactors which you also use in your waste water treatment. Okay. And of course, chemistry people also have to learn this because the catalyst. So, that is why these are the basic equations, even biochemical, you use only these equations. This minus R A will be for them either Monod's equation or Michaelis Menten equation. Okay. So, even the other two reactors also same thing. Okay. Good. So, that is why this graphical procedures must be very easy for us and I love graphs really, because I will tell you later you know optimization only using graphs again Lewenspiel method, wonderful techniques he has developed. Simply drawing graphs, no mathematics required for optimization. Okay. Using graphs, how do you optimize? That means, minimum volume for maximum conversion or minimum uh, maximum conversion for minimum volume or given volume. Okay, that also we will discuss later. There are many exciting things to learn, even though you have learnt once, because it will be more exciting now, now learning the same thing. Okay, good. Anyway, I am thankful for you because you have forgotten everything. So that's why, that's why I think all these things we may appreciate. Okay, good. So I think here we will stop. This is what is the batch reactor, but surprisingly, you notice that in batch reactor there is no volume present anywhere. These are the final expressions. This is nine. This is ten. This is one final expression and this is another final expression, okay, C A naught. Right? Where is the volume coming there? And the next class we will see where the volume comes. Because finally you have to tell so much volume of the battery reactor. But any quantity you take, you will only get time. 